Good morning to all of those tuning in. This is the Rebel Lemon, and today we're going to be playing Bard Harder. And my normal schedule at the moment is on pause just because my boss thinks I've been working myself a little too hard. So we're going to be playing some relaxing games. <sighs> yeah, this is my life. My boss basically rules over my schedule. Ah, that's how it goes though, isn't it? So, from what I do know about this game, it does have five different endings, of which the first playthrough we're gonna do blind, and then basically I'll just skip to uh, the next endings. I will basically just explain what you have to do before we continue on with them. Um, other than that, I know this game is over the top, so you know what? My voice, uh, voice acting, whatever you want to call it, is also going to be over the top. So with that being said, why don't we get right into it? Okay Robin, let's do the finishing touches. So, for your character, you've chosen to play as a half-elf male bard. Yes. I mean, I've lived my whole life as a girl, so it might be fun to play as a boy, you know? Hmm. Wow, Robin. That was a dorky thing to say. I can't believe that Subin Park asked me to play that tabletop game with her. Wizards and Wyverns. I guess this means Subin and I will get to see a lot more of each other. I was so nervous when she asked me to play. She's so cool. I hope I don't mess up. Oh. I think she's explaining the rules to me right now. I should probably focus. But this is really exciting. Uh, Robin? I gotta calm down. Robin? She probably just asked me to play because she needed a fourth player. Not because she liked... I mean, I don't even know if she likes... Robin! Huh? Huh? I've, uh, been calling your name for the past ten seconds. Oh, uh, huh. Oh, sorry, I guess I spaced out. Were you having an internal monologue? What? Psst, no. Haha. <laughs> no. Pfft. Hmm. Do you need me to go over the rules again? Nah. I'm a tabletop expert. Also, I just seen that it says wife and master. Does that. Is this a reference to like D&D? &D? As that is supposed to be like dungeon master? Hmm. I'm a tabletop expert. Oh, an expert, huh? I thought you said you never played the game before. Well, that's true. But I kind of read all of the rule books last night. All of them? Oh, wow. Was that an, oh, wow, you're so cool, Robin? Or an, oh, wow, what a hopeless nerd. Cause you, Susan Park, and your unreadable face. Well, anyways... Congratulations on building your first W&W character. It is a D&D reference. Fuck yeah. I love D&D. I always try to play Necromancer if it's available. If not, then a mage. Granted, we're playing a bard in this, right? I'm not familiar with how bards work. Mostly because A... I don't really pay attention to anything outside of my class. And B, I just think they're kind of lame. I know they do, um, uh, like buffs and debuffs, but do they do attacks? Is that a thing? Oh, fucking, I don't know. Oh, thanks. I couldn't have done it without you. Ah, true. You literally could not have. You know, she's kind of cute. Well, 
let's take a look at your sheet. Here you go. The only thing left to do, you haven't picked a name for him. Oh. Um. <laughs> okay, I just noticed that. Uh, level one, bard, half elf, chaotic, sexy. That's actually kind of awesome. Oh, easy. Of course, it's going to be Lemon. Um, I don't know how to do the accents, to be honest. Um, as I believe, I need that little um, triangle hat on top of the O. But we'll go with this. Hmm, Lemon. Ah, that's an interesting choice. I think it fits. He's going to be the most charming, sexiest, uh, dashingest bard in all the lands. So he needs the perfect name. Hey, look at that. Perfect name. Huh. Dashingest. Well, I'll see you Monday then, to start off this game. Uh, yeah, I'll see you Monday. Uh, actually, there was something else I wanted to ask you. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> never mind. See you Monday. Okay, see you then. And, um, let me know if you remember your question. I'm glad you're playing with us. Damn, that's a smile that can fucking melt people. See you Monday. Six months later. Brave so mumble blonde. Synthes Diablade, the thief. Not gonna lie, he looks like an asshole. Wise Arabella, the Archmage. And of course, the dashingest bard in all the lands. Lemon. It has been an arduous journey. But now, at long last, you realize that this is time for your greatest adventure to end. A burst of thunder cracks loudly, shaking the very rafters of the palace. The lightning illuminates the skeletal, hideous fissures of all Kilzar the Lord of Crawling Bone. Your enchanted violin shakes in your sweaty palms as you hear his low, maniacal laughter. Mwahaha. <laughs> Ow, that actually kind of hurts. You can see your friends suspended in cages behind him. They call out for you to help them. Lemon, you are only hope. I believe in you. Play this very carefully, Lemon. You, you'll have to overthink him. Ugh, I told you guys, this was an obvious trap. We're screwed. Valkyrza slowly levels his gaze to stare at you, Lemon. Ha 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 ha. You're too late, little hero. Three of your friends are now my prisoners. I only need three sacrifices to control Worldbiter, the Demi Dragon. And now you've arrived. Just in time to die. Hmm. <laughs> You'll never get away with this. Oh ho, but I already have, you little fool. You've completely defenseless. You know that no harm may come to me when I am safe in my lair. Besides, you don't even have a weapon. All you have is this silly little violin. What can you possibly do? What can you possibly do? <laughs> well, we're going to flip with Valkyza. <laughs> oh.
honestly, I find it completely hilarious that we just come out of the game and be like, wait, what? Can you actually do that in D&D? Can you literally just flirt with an enemy to win the game? Is that a thing? You what? Here we go. Oh my god, yay! Okay, now she is a cutie. I can't even tell you why. I think it's just the way she not only dresses, but just her appearance in general. I find it like super adorable. Oh my god, yay! Hmm, interesting. Subin is staring at... staring really hard at me. <laughs> Are they gonna kiss? This is so exciting. Valkyza and Lamon are my OTP. The fuck? The fuck is OTP? Hold up. Hold up. Give me one sec. Okay, I'm back and I looked it up. OTP apparently means one true pairing. You think I would have known that, but I don't. Ah, your OTP has existed for a grand total of... Four seconds. Ah, that's what makes it so thrilling. There's so much new relationship energy. Relationship energy. He's trying to murder us. Hmm. Are you really gonna flirt your way out of this, Robin? Huh, I guess I did just decide to do that. Well, nothing to do but commit to it, I guess. I'm sure this is gonna work. Come on, you guys. Have a little faith. Lemon is the most charming, sexiest, dashingest bard in all the land. If anyone can succeed in convincing a death lord to announce evil, it's Lemon. Ha, yeah, I believe in you. My paladin. So Mumblebron starts cheering you from inside his cage. This is so silly. Hold on. Let's see what our mighty wyvern master has to say about the matter. The entire gaming table is silent as Subin stares at me impatiently. Um, all her gaze is so intense. My heart is skipping a beat. She's getting ready to speak. Are you sure you want to pursue this course of action? Valkyza won't hold back. Flirting, flirting with Valkyza, the Lord of Kong Bone, King of Putrid Waste, Bringer of the Blight Unending, High Wizard Noctorius, and the Dark Star, which blots out the morning sun. Okay, I will say that last one's a bit mouthy, but I think my favorite has to be the Lord of Crawling Bone. That one's actually really damn good. Or Bringer of the Blight Unending. That one's also pretty good. But I will say Noctorious would actually just be a solid name in and of itself. Yeah, I just kind of like it. It sounds nice. It is, well, a risky proposition, to say at least. So I asked you again. Are you sure? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh shit, we're doomed. This should be interesting. We. Oui. Very well. It is decided. Lamont the Bard. In your desperate attempt to rescue your friends, you have chosen to flirt with Valkyza. This battle has now become a war of wills. Let the story continue. Alright then, what are you gonna do? Hmm, I always my magic violin, and I start the play. Waltz of wooing. What? Oh. Huh? 
brilliant maneuvering, young bard. The power of music will make Valkyza more vulnerable to your aura of flirtatiousness. Play as many songs as you can. You'll be hopelessly entranced. Shut up. Mm. Ugh. You would dare use your ma musical magic on me? I despise... I'm sorry, what? How the fuck do you pronounce that? That's ma music magic. Oh, fuck. Is it Ao? Mancy? Ugh, fucking magic music. It's cheating. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. As your song continues, Valkyza slowly softens. Your elven friend is dead wrong, you know. Magic music can only affect those who have the ability to love. Your song continues, and Valkyza's Twin prick eyes gleam malishly. Oh shit, I gotta do a sexy voice. Ha ha ha. And since I have no love in my heart, I can't be touched. So you should probably just give up now. Stop that. Cut it out. Your song continues, and Valkyza begins to laugh. Fine. Fine. Go ahead and waste your last reserves of magic on that silly strumming. I won't be affected by your inconsequential de desperation. Your song continues. Hmm, <clears throat> come to think of it. It's been over 600 years since someone flirted with me. Ha, well then, bud. Your paltry attempts will surely amuse me. If you're going to flirt with me, it better be impressive. So, take your best shot. You can do it, young Bon. Let the magic flow through you. Ugh. Why is he such a fucking party pooper? Jesus Christ. What are you gonna do? Alright, let's think about this. I'd assume the seduction check would work. That and it's the whole principle of the game, right? Maybe I can seduce him. Yo, Valkyza. Yes. You got... Uh, a killer jawline. Hmm, roll for seduction. You rolled. A2. Rip. Oh, actually, just remember... That no matter what you go, doesn't necessarily matter to the outcome of the situation. So for instance, let's say you're rolling for intellect. Just because you get a nat 20, that doesn't mean you can actually pass the intellect um, check. What actually happens is the nat, like the dice, is a modifier to your stats. And... If your stats plus the modifier do not add up to, so if they do not equal to or are greater than the uh, check, um, basically stat, then it's always going to fail. But the opposite is also true. You can roll a nat 1 and still pass a check if your stats are high enough. As far as I'm concerned, that's how it works, but I might be wrong. Anyways. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh crud, I made a mistake and my music is getting worse. Ha 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 ha. And here, I thought you were supposed to be sexy. Little did you know, I'm self conscious about my jawline. And I don't find it that flirtatious at all. Oof, breaking that self confidence. Damn. I mean, to be fair, it would be a viable strategy. A dick one, but viable. Lemon, how can you flirt with Valkyza when you don't know anything about him? You should gather information and use it against him. Good point. Hey, stop helping him. In that case, maybe I'll, inv 
uh, investigate instead. All right then, you take the moment to search your surroundings. You notice that Falkuzar seems to put a lot of effort into the decor of his lair. The blazes behind him are fashioned into the shape of dragon's claws. They seem to match his staff perfectly. That, could that be intentional? Hmm, okay. Maybe he'd be flattered if I complimented his staff. And it's a good staff. Anyways. Long. Sorry, wait, I have to do that line again. And it's a good staff anyways. It's so long. Balkyoza shakes off your first attempt. Now, you little whelp. You've had your practice attempt. But now your friend's life's are on the line. Flirt with me if you dare. Fire blazes in Falkyrzar's eyes as he challenges you. Now's your chance. What will you say? Time, it's time to flirt. Okay. The answer I'm going to be going with is going to be the first one, but I'll read the other ones. You're looking pretty suvelt in that robe of yours. I've never seen someone with such a fancy crown. Or, oh, what a nice staff you have there. Ha 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 ha, you, you, you noticed? Of course I did. Your staff matches the blazes. I can only mean one thing. You have excellent taste in interior design. You're fashionable and tasteful. Huh. Vokuzai's eyes glimmer in rebellion. Your words mean nothing to me. Everyone knows about my legendary good taste. How dare you try to woo me? Vokuzai staggers back, covering his ears. But your playing gets even more powerful. No, cease this wretched musical onslaught. Now that I backed them into a corner, oh sorry, backed them down, there should be my chance to press my advantage. But how? Lamon, use the mine invasion spell. What? But I've been saving it. Saving it for what? This is the final boss. If you know what makes Fall Cusa a tick, you better able to flirt with him. I thought I told you to shut up. Stop helping him. Ah! Ah, uh, okay. It's my only shot. Hold my violin. I hold my violin aloft. And I cast Mine Invasion. Gasp! Yes! Oh. If I can get inside Bokyoza's mind, I'll be able to learn so much more. Then my flirting will be unstoppable. Very well. You roll a 16. Your spell was successful. The world shimmers and dissolves around you. Until suddenly you find yourself in a brand new location. Uh, where am I? Lemon, you find yourself standing in an elegant library. Hundreds of leather tomes line your shelves. AKA fancy old books. You realize that this must be inside Valkyrzar's mind. Here you will find the information you need to flirt with him. Great! This is my chance to find the clues I need. Valkyrzar will probably re react more strongly if I write songs about things that are important to him. If I'm going to read through his memories, I should be careful to know important facts about his life. I gotta keep my mind sharp. Lamon. You only have a few minutes before the spell wears off. But there are three books that have piqued your interest. Which ones will you read? Uh, Victor's The Wizard Fairy Tale, My Life in Images, A Volkyza uh, Portrait Album, and Volkyza's Dream Di Di Diary Private. Oh, it's so cute! You crack open the book and begin to read. The book appears to be several dial entries written in Falkyrza's looping, swirling handwriting. Which entry will you read? 
Uh, fuck yeah, I want to lead about the lemon. It's about me after all. The entry seems to be the most recent one, judging by the day. It's only a few days old. You quickly skim it. Dear Dream Diary, Wow, what a freaking dream I had last night. For some weird reason, I dreamt about Lamon, one of those adventurers who's coming to kill me. I've been watching them through my crystal ball on the way here, and that one guy, Lamon. Anyways, in the dream, he like kicked down the door of my castle, and then started playing me a song, and then we started smooching like there's no tomorrow. I've never felt this way about a guy before. Oh gods, am I bisexual? No one must ever know. These secrets I keep with you, Dream Diary. What a ridiculous dream. A bit lower on the page, there are some things written about Valkyrie in Valkyrie's loopy curse of handwriting. Valkyrie plus Lamont. Mr. Valkyrie Lamont. Mr. and Mr. Lamont. That last one is took scratched out. The entry ends here. Which entry will you read next? What a simp. The entry seems to be a few months old. You quickly skim over it. Do you dream diary? Well, last night I dreamt I had lips. What a blast from the past. It's been so many decades since I even had skin. Oh well, a nose? Or most importantly, lips. Huh. <sighs> you know, nobody wants to kiss a skeleton who doesn't have lips. But more importantly, I can't play my favorite instrument without lips. Gasp. I better make sure no one ever finds this dream diary. They might find out my secret. That there is one instrument that is my weakness. Okay, in that case, I won't write what it is. Huh. Lips. It's a weird word when you think about it. Lips, lips, lips. The entry ends here. What entry will you read next? I don't really care how the other ones sound boring. To his life portraits. You crack open the book. The pages are covered with swirling portraits that seem to swirl at your touch. Which image would you like to examine? Um... Let's go top down for this one. There are leaving home, I'm interested in camp by memories, and then spirit of the river. All right, let's do it. This painting is of Vaku Zar standing at the outskirts of a large city. He has a bag slung over his shoulder. As you touch the image, you hear Vaku Zar's voice inside your head. Oh yes, yes, I remember this day. After. I had that little chat with the fate father. I knew I had to leave the city. Great things were in store for me. And when I left, I didn't miss anyone at all. After all, dear daddykins probably didn't even notice I was gone. And friends, bah, never had them. Never needed them. Although, I suppose there was one small moment of regret. When I had to say goodbye to my beloved pet. Dear sweet Sylvia, <sighs> and she was so sad to see me go, the blessed little creature. I wish I had a picture of her in here somewhere. The voice stops, and the picture stops swelling. Ah, can't buy memories. This portrait shows Valkyrie sitting next to an elven woman. The two of them are sitting around a campfire. The woman is showing Valkyrie a small little box. Uh, as you touch the image, yeah, same thing. Um, ah, this is a rather nice memory. I, shit. Ah, this is a rather nice memory, I suppose. Near Mia and I were on our way to meet the Wish Mother. Apparently, according to the old legends, in exchange for a wish, you have to give up something you value. Yamiya was planning on giving up a little music box. It belonged to her mother. Yamiya is such a sentimental person. A little too much, if you ask me. 
But when she opened the music box, it was a little easier to understand. The box plays the red rose of spring. That's my favorite song. So I suppose I can understand a bit of sentiment here or there. I remember realizing that I haven't brought anything to give to the wish mother. I really hoped that wouldn't be an issue. It turns out it sort of was. The voice stops. I will say it is kind of hard to switch back and forth between my voice and the voice I'm using for him. But it is fun. Um, now that one has me curious about the wish mother. Yeah, let's do it. This portrait depicts Valkyza and a tall Evan woman wearing long black robes. The two of them are standing in a cave. They stand before a bizarre creature, a gaping toothy maw, is set into the cave floor. Two slimy green eye stalks rise out from the cave floor as well. And that's the same one. Well, this is... This one is Nubia and I again. We made it to the Wish Mother, after all. When we got there, she gave us the whole rundown. The whole, oh, there will be a terrible price to pay for your wishes. All the usual stuff, blah, blah, blah. I wished for immortality as planned. And Nubia, she wished for a sick brother to be cured. It seemed like a real waste of a wish. My wish was way, way better. Although it turns out I did have a price to pay. In exchange for immortality, the wish mother took my skin. Ha! <sighs> Damn wish mother. I suppose the fate father did warn me though. I lost three things I value most. Just like he said I would. The voice stops and the image stops moving. What portrait will you look at next? The Spirits of the River. This portrait depicts Va Vakuza standing at a riverbank. He is staring at shark, in shark at three pale sirens who have emerged from the water. The sirens appear to be singing at the tall elven woman. As soon as you touch the painting, it starts shifting and you hear Vakuza's voice in your head. Wow. Well, this memory isn't so fun. <sighs> On our way back, Nemir, we went into a spot of trouble. When we crossed the great river, we ran into a trio of river spirits. I defended myself with a quick spell, but Nemir was a little too slow. The sirens cast a horrible spell on her. I hate sirens. Come to think about it, I hate magic music in general. It's only used by monsters and charlatans. Well, anyways, I would have left Nemia behind, but... <sighs> Oath of loyalty. The voice stops and the image stops moving. Um, I'm not really interested in the bandits one. You crack open the book and begin to read. It seems as though as the book is split into se several chapters. Where to begin? Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm good. The spell's magic fades away. The library dissolves around you. And you are face to face with an angry fall. Yeah, you know what? That actually is a little smoother fall. You, what have you done? You read my thoughts. That's cheating. You, you didn't read the dream diary, did you? <laughs> oh, I totally did. Ugh. Impossible. You'll pay for that. Suddenly, Valkyrza turns back to your friends. Time to say goodbye to your friends. What? Valkyrza snaps his finger, and one of the cages open. Huh? Archmage Arabella. Make a saving throw. Oh no. Archmage Arabella, you roll a nat one. Rip. Ack. No, Arabella. 
You watch as the archmage comes tumbling out of the cage, falling towards an open pit below. Lemon, don't forget me. Jesus Christ, that was loud. Arabella, you take 37 fall damage. Is, is she dead? I'm alive, you guys. Just at the bottom of this pit. Arabella hears an enormous creature rolling in the dark. Well, that gave tingles down my spine. Uh, and I think something else is down here, too. Oh, of course there is. You're the appetizer for the demi dragon. One down, two to go, and then the demi dragon will bow to me. And now, who will be the next to die? Lamon, what are you waiting for? Do something. Oh, uh, girl, I'm panicking. <laughs> Already giving up on your silly little flirt attempts. I knew you didn't have it in you. Now why don't you just attack me already? And we can finish this fight like normal foes. Hmm, <laughs> that gives me an idea. Fine, if that's what you want, I will attack you, Val, Val with the most impressive, flashy, sexy attack you've ever seen. I attack Volcusa. Alright, but what do you attack him with? Hmm. Be Bob a Blazing, Glam Punk Glacier, Liquid Funk Lightning? Are you kidding me? That sounds fucking dope. Of course we're gonna go with that. Valkyrza jumps back, stunned by the lightning, by the electric shock of the lightning. He stares at you, mouth agape. That, that form. Those bolts of lightning. I mean, okay, first of all. Ow. But second of all, that was... Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That was kind of impressive. Gods, there's nothing I love more than I really... Like, a really fancy lightning attack, you know? I've only known one person who could wield lightning magic like that. Um, so you know that was... Wait, what am I saying? What is your magic doing to me? What was I doing again? Oh right, killing your friends. Val seems to slightly, seems slightly stunned from the magic. Lemon, me old friend, he's vulnerable. You got to give it everything you got. You're right, moms. Valkyza, I know you're not as cold-hearted as you appear to be. What? You dare? Sorry. What you dare say about me? After you just witnessed me attempting to kill one of your friends? Yeah, 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 that's pretty much about right. There must be some scrap of goodness in you. Because I know that you care about those in poverty, or an animal lover, buy people thoughtful gifts. Ah, the guy's an animal lover. Wait, what? Before Valkyza can react, I cast Pet Lover Polka. Very well. As you raise your instrument, it magically transforms from a violin into a radiant accordion. Fuck yeah, I love accordions. They sound amazing. I kind of wish I wish I knew how to play them. They'd kind of be awesome. The only impressive thing I know how to do is juggle. I used to play the ukulele though. Though, I don't think I could anymore. It's been years. But anyways... The very palace shakes at the fury of your majestic polka. Here we go. It's time to sing. Ooh. Okay. I am not good at singing, but I will try. For the spirit of the game. Oh, vo, vo, vo. You're not as quiet as naughty as you think you are. 
You say you never loved, you make that so clear. But you loved your pet named Suavia. What? 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 How? Did, did you know that name? Suavia. Keep playing, keep playing. Your music builds in power and rhythm. I also know that your special pets say. Uh, fuck. I don't actually know. Um, I know it's not a parrot. It doesn't seem like it would be. I honestly thought it was a dog off the bat. But having a spooky spider seems more like his thing. But I'm really hoping that's not the case, because I'm terrified of spiders. Because you named yourself for her when you were a fighter. As I finish the song, I cast transformation on myself as a grand final. No, 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 no. Poof. Oh, God, fuck. Ah! Oh, gods. Stranger, though, Ball seems entranced. A single tear rolls down his skeletal face. Oh, Sylvia, how I miss you. And nobody's ever t turned themselves into a spider abomination before. Just to impress me. I'm touched. Oh, God, fuck no. I want to get past this as soon as possible. Vol, Vol, that's why you picked the name the Scarlet Arachnid. During your fighting days, wasn't it? Oh. I think the arena was actually more important than I thought. You named yourself after your beloved pet. And that's probably one of the reasons you want to raise the Demi Dragon, isn't it? You miss having a pet. I. I. Vol's voice trembles slightly. Look at me, Vol. Look upon my fishes. See the adorableness of my face, just like your dear, beloved Sylvia. Mm. It's working. Silence! Vol snaps himself out of the spell. Sure, that's cute, but it's only a paltry enchantment. It can't... Oh god, choked on some spit. <laughs> it can't stand up to real power. Real power like this. The last thing you see is Vol raising his arms to blast you with a beam of darkness. I just noticed, does he have four hands? Huh. You think that's something I should have noticed earlier? And just as he prepares to do so, the WM takes a bathroom break. Ah, uh, cliffhanger. How will Plucky Solomon get out of this one? I suppose we'll have to see if he does. And we'll, we'll return in 10 minutes. Subin, I'm about to leave. Maybe that's a good time to ask her. Hey, Subin. Shoot. She didn't hear me. Oh, well, she's going to the bathroom anyways. Maybe I'll get another chance after the game. Well, friends... I'm gonna hit up the old snack bar. Anybody want something to drink? I would, thank you. Let's go. Bzz, bzz. Oh damn, I gotta take this call. Be right back. Come join us in the kitchen, Reuben. Sorry, Robin. Goddamn. We'll have a ten minute break. Subin's in the bathroom, so I guess I can't talk to her. Hmm, who should I hang out with? Alright, I'm gonna pause here. For a quick second, I'm not ending the broadcast. I just need to take a break so my throat can recover, as Vol's voice is actually kind of rough on it. So I'll be back when I get it recovered. So I'll see you then. <sighs> okay, let's get right back into it. So I did take my break. Uh, my throat's feeling a little better. So we have three options Aladdin who is raiding the pantry, 
Nia, who doesn't seem like she's doing anything. And then Pursley, who's on the phone. Um, I don't really want to bug Pursley, since, you know, she's on the phone. And Aladdin might be too distracted by the snacks, so we're gonna go near. So, let's get right back into it. Hey, wait up, you guys. I hope we get to talk to more than one person. I found Nia sitting at the kitchen table, flipping through a book. It looks like Aladdin is pretty busy with snacks. I'll chat with Nia. Robin, hey. Hey, Nia. What's going on? Hmm, I should ask Nia about one. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's ask her about everything. Why not? Hey, so what's that book you're looking at? Oh, haha. <laughs> oh, this? It's research for my final illustration project. Oh, cool. What are you doing for your project? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Using the famous woodblock paint, the dream of the fisherman's wife, as inspiration. Uh-huh. I'm illustrating a meal that depicts the intersectionality, so intersectionality of the aquatic and the erotic with heavy exploration of the curve. LOL, themes in Japan's media. I actually know what that means, surprisingly enough. It's weird. Uh, uh-huh. It's going to be about a deep dive. LOL. Oh, I get it. It's a, uh, it's a ocean or like a water joke into the connection between oceans, eros, and the unknowable beyond. Ah, obviously the, there'll be notes to the left Lovecraftian mythos, but they'll be meant as a deconstruction of the repugnant elements rather than the homage. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, you have to understand that uh, a lot of what is in his book is super fucking racist when you think about it. Um, like, so essentially he has different uh, groups of characters, like the fish people who are directly linked to real-world counterparts. I believe the fish people are supposed to represent black people or black individuals, um, which is super racist, unlike how not only they're described, but how they act in the book. But you also have to remember that during his time, racism was more okay than it is now, though that doesn't mean it makes it appropriate, but I think the worst thing is, and this is what makes it even more inexcusable, is that even for Lovecraft's time, people viewed him as racist, like repugnantly so, which is weird, but yeah, that's food for thought. Lovecraft was so racist that even in his time of rampant racism people will turned off by his racism go fucking figure right uh cool sometimes i don't really understand what nia is talking about and uh what's that book she's reading for research looks like some sort of comic book about an octopus but why an octopus dating a college student because that's hentai and yes, I know what that is. Anyways, hmm, weird. Uh, let's change the subject. Hmm, sh I should ask Nia about. Uh, what about the game? Crazy session, huh? <laughs> sure is. Can't believe Lamont is flirting with Vakusa. I guess I shouldn't be uh, uh, that surprised. Lamont is so charming. Heck yeah. He's the charming, charmingest. God, I butchered, I butchered that one. Don't you remember when Lemon flooded with my little dwarf, Sir Mobile Brown? How could I forget? <laughs> that was one of my favorite scenes. Lemon picked all the violets from the garden, of which echo, and then Mob laced them in a, his big fancy beard. Oh yeah, wow, that was a long time ago. It's not around the time when Lamont and Mom started dating. 
Huh. Yeah, and they dated for another six months. Huh. And we adopted those six halfling children. Right, right. And then later realized that they were just not in the right place for a serious relationship. What happened to the children? Seriously, what happened? Did you guys just ditch them? Oh my god, that's so fucked up. I'm glad that even though Marvy and Lemon have moved on, that they can be so supportive of each other. <laughs> Me too, Lemon. And Marvel Brown are best friends. Wow. We should have done a lot in this campaign, haven't we? Oh, hey, I also want to ask you. Subin. So, hey, uh, Nia? Y yeah. So, um, I was trying to ask Susan something a minute ago. Oh my god, you were gonna ask her that question. Uh, yeah. Uh, she didn't actually hear me though. Oh, haha, <laughs> that's okay. You should try again after the game. Oh, and here's a tip. Subin was literally telling me yesterday that she wants to try this new restaurant called McCormix. Oh yeah? Yeah, I um I think it's a seafood place. Okay. Yeah. So that might help, you know. Wow. Well, thanks, Nia. Yeah. We're all rooting for you. <laughs> huh, thanks. Wait, all oh, am I that obvious? Huh, maybe you should change the subject. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything else. Oh, can we not talk to anyone else? Oh, fuck. Hey, looks like everyone's heading back. Let's join them. Welcome back. Ah, where were we? Oh, yeah. Lamont was just about to die. Wait, what? Vol, Vol unleashes a ton of black lightning at you, Lemon. Roll to dodge. Go, Lemon. Yeah, don't die or whatever. I'm still in this pit. Wait, is that the guy? I never thought about it until now, but that's... Yeah, that has to be the guy. Because Nia is a dwarf, and then... Um, the androgynous person is a cat because it matches the aesthetic, and then that one is the only guy. Huh, that one's that's so weird. It's only weird because I just noticed it. You old A five. Oh no, your body is engulfed by electricity, and you take. 47 damage. You hit the floor, your clothes smoldering with electric energy. You barely have the strength to get back to your feet. Lemon, are ye still haul and hearty? Haul, yes. Hearty, not so much. Oh, fuck. Looks like it's time for the cat's claws to come out. Can I try to pick the lock on my cage? You can try. It'll take a few minutes, though. Hmm, I noticed that since it's trying to break free. Ha! Ha ha ha. Pathetic bard. Your time has come. Volcusa is about to turn around. He'll see since trying to escape. Ah, I have to distract him. Yo, Volky. What? I'm not down yet. I got another song in store for you. Oh, really? You think there's something else good about me? In fact, I know there is. Because you are. Um, doesn't really care about his father. I never got anything religious. He did say something about loyal in his mind. I got uh, what? Get ready, for. I wink at since. I glare at Lemon. I glare at Synths because I know how much she likes glaring. <laughs> Fucking hell. 
Oh god. Okay. Ugh, get ready for what? Oh, right. Get ready for my second bot song. The Loyalty Lullaby. Lemon, as you cast the all-powerful Loyalty Lullaby, strands of pink twist and swirl around your violin, transforming it into a golden harp. The palace thrums and coos with soft, entrancing music. It's time to sing. I love the music in this game. It's so top-notch and on point. Okay. For the Lord of Crawling Bone, you haven't always been alone. You swore an oath to your friend near me for loyalty's equality. You hold most dear near me. Vo wavers slightly at the name, his head drooping a little bit. Psst, keep going. I'm almost out of here. Ugh, you, I don't care about Nimir. I broke that oath a long time ago. Oh, fuck. That's not true. For even when she was... She was drowning in the river, right? Or oh, it, it was more like an attempted drowning. Right? Fuck, now I'm second guessing. Because in the other book, it would said something about a statue, which might mean she was turned to stone. Fuck, I'm just gonna go with drowned. Uh, that never happened. You're simply rambling, pathetic. Vol shakes off the drowsiness of the music and slowly turns around. As he turns, Vol spots Synth. Trying to break out of her cage. What? Trickery. Deceit. This is why I hate music. Vol snaps his fingers, and your cage opens since. Roll dexterity. Oh boy, here it goes. Great. Four. Die. Since you tumble out of the cage and plummet 30 feet straight down. Meow. You crash into the bottom of the pit, taking 18 points of damage. No, Synthus. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the pit... Oh, hello. Ugh. Fancy seeing you down here, Synthus. The Demi-Dragon roars. Uh, yes, we're in a spot of trouble down here. Vol's eyes are ablaze. You just won't give up, will you? You stupid bod. Ah, that's two of your friends gone. Why don't we just end this silly little game? You've done your best, but you're no match for my powers. Hmm. Vol is gonna be tough to break. I should pump up my playing, but how? Psst, Lemon. I may not have any spells or lockpicking abilities. But there's one thing I can give you. Backup vocals. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Thanks, Mobby. With Mob Bronze, rich baritone vocals backing you up. Your magic music power grows exponentially. For the next 30 seconds, your aura of flirtatiousness will be doubled. Lemon, what song shall ye play next? I'm feeling pretty confident. What the heck? Let's play my theme music. Oh, I, I know it quite well. Nice. Let's go. Bomb, 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 bomb. Alright then, roll for performance. You won't. Drum roll. An 18. Oh, yes. Your violin sparks and spits flames as you engulf. Oh, shit. Can I go back? Oh, I can. Uh, spits flames as you engulf a vol in a maelstrom of unbridled charisma. The very atoms in the air seem to be charmed by your playing. 
flowers burst through the cold stone tile of Vol's palace, raising their petals to the sky. Gah! What sorcery? You're too sexy. Oh shit. What sorcery? You're too sexy. N no. Vol casts deceitful mute mask. You, you can't flirt with me. If I'm not even me. Vol's body begins to twist and morph. In his haste, Vol transforms into the first person who comes to mind, which just so happens to be me. Ha ha ha! It's me, Sir Marbrown. His defensive powers are now mine to command. Oh. His defensive powers are now mine to command. And I've stolen his personality too. Yo ho ho. Best of all, you can flirt with me with such a silly looking dwarf. Oh, don't be sh so sure, Vaughn. I know how to flirt with Sir Marbrown. In fact, I have the perfect gift right here. Give Sir Marbrown the uh, violence. That's what uh, they did last time. Poof! A fancy bouquet of violets. Oh, I. Lamont, you remembered my favorite flower. So thoughtful. Why, I'll make a little flower beard. Wait. And put them in my wee beard and. Wait. What? What's happening to me? Even with my new personality, I feel so loved. I. That's showing him lemon. Don't let up. Ye silly scal. Lamon knows how to flirt with me even better than he knows how to flirt with ye. You've done played yourself. Ugh. Forget this then. Lamon, my voice is getting sore. Hurry up and finish the old bugger. Right. I keep playing the violin and flirting as hard as I can. As I prepare the next song, the music is bringing Vol to his knees. Such magic has never been seen before in all kingdom. Ugh. You... You're pretty cute, Bon. You... Maybe I'll let your friends go. If you give me a little... A little... Vol seems to be at war with himself. A little kissy. No! Desperately, Vol shakes off the efforts of your magic. You can't. Suddenly, Vol begins glowing brightly. As he casts one last defensive spell. Visual Penopi. Penopoly? Ha ha ha. ha ha. Ah ha 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 ha. How can you flirt with me when you don't know which one is the real me? Oh, don't be so sure of yourself, Paul. I'm going to take aim with my final song. After all, your clones aren't completely perfect. And I've been paying attention to details. Which one is the real Paul? I'm sorry, what? I'm supposed to be paying attention to details on him? Fuck, I'd assume he had the purple one, right? But, knowing Fall likes aesthetically pleasing things, he would go with the yellow, right? Because it would match his staff. Okay, I'm gonna go with number three. But if I fuck up, I'm gonna be pissed because I knew it was the first one. I take aim at the Vol, vol on the right. I'd recognize that face anywhere. They all have the same faces. And I unleash the full fury of my next song. Power Ballet. Your choice was correct. No. How did you know which one was me? You must have been lucky. Lucky? Nope. I just know you really, really well. And now, things are about to get real serious. 
because I also know your ultimate weakness. No, what? No, that's impossible. Oh, it's possible. And your weakness is that you have a favorite instrument. I, uh, what? That's right. And I know what it is too. Here we go. Power ballet time. As she can music rages, Val goes silent. As he becomes enraptured by the full force of your song. Lemon, it's time to sing. Of all there's one sound you can't resist. You've got an ultimate weakness and baby this is it. The instrumental sound that you love to hear is playing on a... Okay, the only one here that takes lips is the flute. So let's go with that one. Flute. I've seen your brain and it made that plain. So don't try to refute it. As you're playing, your gu guitar starts to shift into a golden flute. So drop your defenses and sing along. Cause I'm about to play your favorite song. Here's a little ditty called... Oh, the Red Rose of Spring. That's his favorite. Dark lightning glimmer. In Fall's eye sockets, as you mentioned the song title. For one more performance, Lemon the Bard is gonna sing. Thunder claps as you as your guitar finishes its transformation into a beautiful golden flute. What? No, no! My weakness. Sorry. What what no? My my weakness. That's right, Vaughn. You actually do like music after all. No, I won't listen. In desperation, Val raises his hands, casting a glowing pink shield over his entire body. Can you break through it with your music? Have you flirted well enough so far? There's only one way to find out. It is time to sing one last time. Here we go. With all your skills, you attempt to play the Red Rose of Spring. The music flows throughout the castle. You can see the cracks starting to form on Vol's shield. What? What are you doing? You can do it, Lamon. This is your moment. Bard with everything you've got. I'm barding as hard as I can. Lamon, bard harder. Gas. You're right. I bought harder. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I roll for Christmas. Okay, you roll. A nat 20. Holy shit. Oh, yes. All right. Fuck yeah. Lemon, you play the flute like no mortal has before. The entrance music pouring from your... The entranting music entrancing music pouring from the instrument causes great cracks to appear on Vol's shield. What? What? No. What's happening? Stop that. That's... That's my favorite song. Why are you being so cute? Because I'm the most charming. Sexiest. Dashingest spot in the whole land. Vol's eyes glow brightly. And as you are a flute, Solo reaches its dramatic, soaring crescendo. It reaches a magnificent pitch. That Vol's shield shatters into a million pieces. Ah! Go, Lamont, go! As you continue playing that famed song, The Red Rose of Spring, Vol's drops to his knees. I... <coughs> I... I sniff. Nobody ever flirted with me like that before. As Vaughn looks up to you, Lamon, you can clearly see. He's very into you. He is? 
Yes. Aye, aye. Woo! Robin, you did it. Lamon. What a lovely name, Lamon. I've been a fool. Here, I've been trying to raise the demi dragon, trying to take over the world and rule over existence like unto a god. I thought that is what I really wanted. When really, <clears throat> when really, it was you that I really wanted, Lemon. All along, ever since that day I saw you in my crystal ball, I've just been too shy to admit it. But now that I've heard you play it so beautifully, and even though I don't have lips, I think I could be brave enough to ask for a little kissy. Hooray! I'm chilling from you from inside this pit. Well, Lemon, how shall you respond? Oh, fuck yes. I can break his heart? Okay. Quick save. We're doing this one first, and then I'll come back and do the next one. And then I'll do the other three endings after these two. Alright. Let's go. Val looks stunned. Oh wait, ba ha 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 No. Val looks stunned. Ha! Bam! Rejected! But, but, but... <laughs> Sad dude. You thought I was actually into you? Nah, man. I was just trying to save my friends. Subin, do I still have my invisible skateboard? You do. I take it on my backpack and... <laughs> Fucking hell. And then Ollie over Ball's head. What a douchebag thing to do. Woo! Yee, take that. Ha ha ha. With this final devastating act, Ball collapses to the floor, weeping inconsolably. Just, just take them and go. Will do, Valky. I recollect my friends. Thanks for pulling me out of the pit. Oh great, my full is all maddy. Ah, that was quite the show, my dear. Once everyone's free, I leave the castle. Can get over a torch stand in on my way. Once we're under the castle, I pat my friends on the back. That was a close one, but we did it. Meow. I we're free. Another victory? For the good guys. Ah, yes, the heroes of virtue have pulled through once more. Yeah, we're awesome. As the flames leap higher, you turn your attention to the horizon. Surely there are a great many more foes to be faced. And many more hearts to callously break. The flames finally die down, and Val's castle crumbles to ash. Hey, you guys. Are, are we the good guys? Right? That question, that is a question that will be answered at our next session. Wow. Well, that was certainly exciting. <laughs> will we survive the next one? Probably. As long as Lamon keeps floating. You did good, Robin. Thanks, guys. Ah. Uh, well, I hate the run, but I gotta go home. I have a package to pick up. Oh, cool. I can't wait to see your new cosplay, Presley. Huh, yeah. You know, I will say, it's not a bad thing, but Andromeda's characters always throw me off. Because in some ways, I am, like, stuck in the old, like, oh, male or female kind of way, when I should know better. It just throws me through a loop. But, you know, they almost always look really damn good. Fuck, I don't know. They just confuse me. It's not a bad thing, just... My mind goes, the what? Anyways, 
I'll just show you guys when it's finished. Well, see you next week. Thanks for letting us play at your apartment, Aladdin. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that is the whole point of being a dramatist, right? Not being able to tell if you're male or female. So my confusion is, at least within the two categories that my mind kind of like tends to go back to, is actually kind of a good thing. I think. Hmm. Maybe I should talk to someone who's in dramatist. I want to get their perspective on things. Anyways, let's continue forth. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. Looks like everyone is packing up. Man, I love playing with my friends. Huh, looks like Supin is slipping away. Ah, uh, this is my chance to ask her. Should I? Psst, Robin, go for it. Before she gets away. Uh, huh, okay. I guess I will. Hey, Aladdin. Thanks for hosting. I'm gonna catch Subin real quick. See you guys next week. Huh. <laughs> See you later, Robin. Okay. Subin's heading out through the back door. I'll follow. Uh, hey, Subin. Wait up. Uh, yes? I, I wanted to ask you. She's gonna do it. Uh-huh. I, uh, um... Is homework... Hard? Uh, what? That's my fucking reaction. What the fuck? Is homework hard? Haha, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess so? Cool, 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 cool. That's all I wanted to ask. Bye! Three hours later, back in my dorm. Ugh, is homework hard? What the heck is wrong with me? Ugh, I really just should have, shouldn't have said anything in the first place. I I guess I thought I might be as flirty as Lemon, but, well, I'm clearly not that brave. Flirting in real life isn't the same as flirting in, ga in some game. Ah, uh, well, anyways, maybe I can try again the next time we play. After all, there's always another adventure. Well, that was the first ending and my first playthrough. With that being said, I'm going to jump to the next ending, um, which we say yes at our level of affection. So, I will see you in a second. Okay, and we're back after a short, probably, break. So, let us pick the other answer. Oh, Vala, Kusa. I thought you'd never ask. Vol gasps. You, you really mean it? Come here, you. And with that, you embrace Vol, Lord of the Crawling Bone, in your arms. Leaning close. And then... Oh my goodness. Oh boy, for once I'm glad I'm in the pit. Is that smooching sounds? The two of you are locked in your embrace for what feels like an eternity. When Vault pulls back, he's glowing with happiness. I can't believe you would kiss a withered skeleton like me. It didn't feel weird without lips? No, not at all. Vo, you've really got to let the lip thing go. Lots of people don't have lips. The fuck are you talking about? Huh? I, I, I guess you're right. Vo thinks for a moment. Lamon, you've given me an entirely new outlook on life. Maybe I don't need to be an arch guard. Maybe it would just be enough to know that someone likes me. The fuck? Did that like clip in weirdly? Aw, Sam, it's so beautiful. 
Ugh, I'm sure the two of you are having a grand, emotionally climactic time up there. But do you think perhaps that someone could get us out of this pit? Oh, goodness, what was I thinking? Of course, I'll let your friends go. Val snaps his bony fingers, and in a flash, Synthes, Mobile Brown, and Arabella appear, <laughs> disposed gently onto the palace floor. You're all looking a little deceived, but not too injured. Oh, disheveled, but not too injured. Lamont. Ye saved us. Ah, oh, what a dreadful affair that was. You did save us. Ah, but now we really ought to call the skeleton a new whip cage. Hey, none of that. Vol has changed, right? That's right. You guys, I'm really sorry. I tried to sacrifice you. To the world ending dragon. Could you ever forgive me? Ah, oh, sure. I've never been one to hold uh, to hold on a grudge. And you freed us, after all, so no harm, no foul, eh? Hmm. I'll be keeping an eye on you, Val. But on the other hand, it might be nice to have another wizard on our side. It gets a bit tiring having to do all the work around here. Huh. Well, I think... Suddenly, you are interrupted. By a loud roaring. Uh, Val? So about that, uh, Tammy dragon. What happens if it doesn't, uh, get any sacrifices after all? Oh. Oh, that's easy. It goes insane, breaks out of its pit and goes on a destructive rampage that... Uh... Oh... I see what you're saying. At that moment, an enormous claw bursts from Vol's dragon pit. A massive gush of flame explodes towards the sky, illuminating the palace ceiling. Oh, goodness. Well, that certainly won't do. Alright, Valky. You want us to trust you. Time to prove it, yeah, okay. Help us fight the Demi-Dragon. I will. I make eye contact with Val and give him a wink. He notices. And tries to return your wink. But he can't. Because he doesn't have any eyelids. Quickly, everyone behind me. Spells at the ready. Lamont, play that sexy flute. Really? That turned you on? Yes, baby. Time to demi die, demi dragon. Oh god, that was awful. With your new friend, and possibly more, the five of you stand side by side. You know, we're going to be riding his bone tonight, but it's... <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm ashamed of my own jokes, but nonetheless, as the demi-dragon arises from the pit, will you all be victorious in your battle, or will you all be consumed by the flames? That is a question that can only be answered. At our next session. Wow. Wow, that was certainly exciting. Will we survive the next one? Eh, probably. As long as Lemon keeps flirting. <sighs> you did good, Robin. Thanks, guys. Ah, uh, well, I hate the run, but I gotta go home. I have a package pickup. Oh, cool. I can't wait to see a new cosplay, Presley. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you guys when it's finished. Well, see you next week. Thanks for letting us play at your apartment, Aladdin. 
Yes, thank you very much. No problems. Looks like everyone is packing up. Man, I love playing with my friends. Huh, looks like Subin is slipping away. This is my chance to ask her. Should I? Psst, Robin, go for it. Before she gets away. Uh, uh, okay. I guess I will. Hey, Aladdin, thanks for hosting. I'm gonna catch Subin real quick. See you guys next week. <laughs> See you later, Robin. Okay. Subin's heading out to the back door. I'll follow. Okay, let's see if the pickup line is different. Uh, hey Subin. Wait up. Uh, yes? I, I wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. I, uh, I, um, this homework, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, that's fine. Ah, uh, anyways, that was the skip one. Um, we're gonna tackle the game over next, and then I want to tackle the good ending, I guess? And then we'll go and look at all the achievements, which you only earn in-game and not on Steam, which is interesting. But I will see you at the next ending. Okay, so I finally basically killed all my hopes of flirting by fucking up at every turn. And I literally don't think I could have messed it up before the 10 minute break? Maybe I could have though. Hmm. You're playing. After falter faltering, finally grinds to a complete squawking halt. Vol looks disappointed. Wow. You were clearly trying your hardest to flirt with me. And yet you failed. Utterly, completely failed. Seriously, I've never been more turned off. Ugh. Well, I should probably kill you now. Wait, what? Vol points at you, and you are suddenly locked in place. Unable to move, you watch in a horror as Vol raises his arms to the sky, cackling all the way. Forget romance. This is where it's at, baby. It's time for the Demi Dragon to arrive. And just as he turns to raise the demon demi dragon, this session comes to an end. Wait, did we all just lose? Ugh, we're all dead, me. There, there has to be something we can do. Oh no, our characters are screwed, and it's all my fault. Oh no, everyone is staring at me in disappointment. If only I could have flitted better. If only I had paid more attention. This, this can't be right, can it? My friends think I'm a fool. I've embarrassed myself in front of Subin. I'll never be able to play a tabletop game ever again. It can't end like this. No. Game over. Well, that was the game over. It's not actually an achievement, but I thought it'd be cool to explore. And now that we have, let's move on to the last two endings. So I will see you then. Okay, so this is the last ending that I promised. In desperation, Val raises his hands. Casting a glowing pink shield over his entire body, can you break through it with your music? Have you flirted well enough so far? This is, there's only one way to find out. It's time to sing one last song. All right, here we go. With your skill, you attempt to play the Rose of Spring. The music flows throughout the castle. You can see cracks done in the form of Vol's shield. What, what are you doing? You can do it, Lamont. This is your moment. Bored with everything you got. I'm boring as hard as I can. You play at your best. But unfortunately, it's not enough. Vol watches you with fiery, fury gaze. 
I won't be defeated. I told you once, I don't have any love in my heart. And with that, fall intensifies the shield surrounding him. Lamon, he's using magic to protect himself. While he's distracted, I can radiate blast. So Marble Brown, your holy aura explodes in a radiant beam, shattering the floor in the cage that's keeping you in prison. Great. While Lemon still playing, I leap down onto the castle floor. Lemon, we have a chance to escape while he's distracted. But what about the others? I can still save them. Ah, no. You've done all you can. Your only option to run. I won't leave the others. Hmm. Alright. I bop Lemon on the head. Hey! Sling him over my shoulder and run out of the castle as quickly as my little dwarf legs can run. Very well. Mr. Marble Brown. Carrying Lemon like a sack of potatoes, you flee from Vol's castle. As you sprint across the drawbridge, you hear Vol lowering his shield. His furious shouts echo across the courtyard, but then fade away. Sir Marble Brown, you and Lemon have escaped with your lives. Ugh, I'm so sorry, young bard. But I had to do it. You weren't gonna beat him. I doubt that anyone could flirt with the Lord of Crawling Bone and live. Ah, I feel like I was so close. If only I had been a little flirtier. Maybe we could have saved everyone. Well, lad, they aren't dead yet. We'll regroup and rescue the other two in the morning. Maybe Vol won't off them. Ah, well, thank you for saving my life, Mobs. I just wish I'd been a little flirtier. Well, should we rest and heal ourselves? Sounds good to me. Do you think our friends are still alive? That is a question that will be answered at our next session. Wow. Well, that was certainly exciting. Will we survive the next one? Probably. As long as Lemon keeps flirting. <laughs> you did good, Robin. Thanks, guys. Ah, well, I hate the run, but I gotta get home. I got a package to pick up. Ah. Okay, cool. I can't wait to see a new cosplay, Presley. Ah, yeah. I'll show you guys when it's finished. Well, see you next week. Thanks for letting us play at your apartment, Aladdin. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. Looks like everyone is packing up. Man, I love playing with my friends. Huh, looks like Supin is slipping away. This is my chance to ask her. Should I? Psst, Robin, go for it. Before she gets away. Uh, huh, yeah, okay. I guess I will. Hey, Aladdin, thanks for hosting. I'm gonna catch Supin real quick. See you guys next week. Ha, huh. see you later, Robin. Okay. Subin's heading out to the back door. I'll follow. Uh, hey, Subin. Wait up. Uh, yes? I, I wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. I, uh, his homework hard. Yeah, the rest is the same. Ah, <sighs> that's kind of boring. So, we'll skip. Ah, <sighs> oh well. Well, get on with the next endings, I guess. So, see you then. Okay, time for the final ending, and let's see if we get the girl in real life. Vol, I thought you'd never ask. Vol gasps. You will you really mean it? Come here, you. And with that, you embrace Vol, Lord of Crawling Bone, in your arms, leaning close, and then. Oh my goodness. Oh boy, for once, I'm glad I'm in the pit. Is that smooching sounds? The two of you are locked in embrace for what feels like an eternity. Ah, uh, looks like Subin is slipping away. This is my chance to ask her. Should I? Psst, Robin, go for it. Before she gets away. Huh, uh, okay, I guess I will. Hey Aladdin, thanks for hosting. I'm gonna catch Subin real quick. 
See you guys next week. <laughs> See you later, Robin. Okay. Subin's heading out through the back door. I'll follow. Hey, uh, Subin. Wait up. Uh, yes? I, I wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. I feel like I'm gonna choke. Uh, you okay, Robin? Pull yourself together, Robin. If Lamont can save the world, I can do this. So, hey. Um, I know all the answers I need because I talked to the other characters, but I'll talk about that more at the end. So, let's continue on. <sighs> Thanks for learning the game today. Oh, well, you're very welcome. I hope you all had fun. Oh, I definitely did. Well, I guess I should... Actually, I wanted to ask you something. Oh, go ahead. So I was wondering if you might want to... Get seafood tomorrow? Uh-huh. I gotta keep going. I can't lose minute, minute, momentum now. And then maybe this weekend we could... See the Rothko exhibit at the Met? Wow. Huh. You, uh, you really know what I like, huh? Have you been, uh, stalking me? What? No. Oh, no. I thought I could make her love me by learning all the things she likes. What was I thinking? Real life isn't something like a game. Now she thinks I'm a creep. A stupid Robin. Stupid, dumb, stupid. Um, Robin? Uh, what? You you were having an internal monologue again, weren't you? Uh, g uh, no. You know, it's actually really obvious when you're doing that. You really overthink things, don't you? You know, so do I. Anyways, I was making a little joke about the stalking thing. Kind of. I guess you've been paying a lot of attention. Um, uh, maybe, kind of. Huh, <laughs> yeah. Well... I know you're interested in me. I've known for quite a while. And I'm sure you're wondering if I'm interested in you too. Well, the truth is... We'll explore that in the sequel. I am. It's just... I... Oh no, she's hesitating. What is it? Oh no. Is that... You have another girlfriend at home who's turned to stone? And you're just waiting for her to come back to life? What? You know, I'm not fall, right? Ha, of course, duh. And I guess I'm not really as smooth as Lamont. I was going to say, it's just that I really don't usually date my players. Right, no, I totally understand. I mean, if you need more time to think, or... I mean, I just worry about it being weird with the other players. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think that's a problem. Because when they told me all the stuff you like, they seem to be really supportive. Wait, you learned all that stuff I like from our friends? Uh, yeah, I I wanted to ask them what, how I could impress you. And they, they like me enough to know all those things. Of course they like you. Everybody likes you. I like you. Huh. You... You really asked our friends how to ask me out, huh? <laughs> you must really be nervous. Huh. Yeah, I was. I am really nervous. <laughs> you don't have to be. I don't think I'm, like, scary. Or am I? Huh. Our friends all know we like each other. Yeah, they were acting like it was pretty obvious. I wonder how they caught on. Yeah, no idea. Hmm. Huh. And yeah, they all seemed like they were rooting for us. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I've never really had a final boss session like that. Felt quite like that. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should give this a try. You mean it? You said you might want to get seafood with me. Hmm. You know, I've really been craving crab recently. 
for some reason. Ha, huh, that sounds great. How about tomorrow? Sure. Okay. I'm heading back to my dorm now. But I guess I'll see you tomorrow evening then? I'll see you there. Oh my god, she said yes. Three hours later, back in my dorm. I can't believe it. I actually have a date with Subin. A date! And now, I don't have to stress about asking Subin out anymore. Instead, I can just stress about our date. Our date! Huh. I hope I finished my drawing by then. Then, I could show it to Subin on our date. I've almost finished the rough sketch. Lamon and all his friends. Wait, what am I thinking? There's somebody missing. There we go. Now it's Lamon and all his friends. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Can't wait for the next adventure. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Honestly? Story? Fucking on point. The music? Amazing. I think it's almost the best part of this game. Even though, I will say, I'm not good at singing. It was fun to try. Um, I will also say, doing the overtop voice, uh, well, voices, was actually quite fun. Especially doing a uh, vault. Vokulor's voice, even though his voice was really, really rough on my throat, so it's not likely I'll be doing it very often, but I don't mind doing it now and again. Um, I will say, doing different options in the game has actually some cool outcomes, so I really suggest going through this game and just trying out different outcomes. And what I did find out, which I do like, is unlike a lot of visual novels like this, when you go back, a lot of games won't let you redo the option. This game does, actually. Which I find really cool. I really like that about the game. Um, I will say though, there's four different endings, well technically five. The game over is unique, and the best ending is unique, but the other three endings are kind of samey. Uh, the only real difference is what happens to Fall or not, whether he falls in love with you or is heartbroken. That's one thing that does bug me, but achievements wise, I'm sorry, I don't have one. Did I mess up somewhere? Oh, I think I know where I messed up. A little kissy. The good guys. And then a new adventure. Okay, I actually know how to get this one. So I will be back in a second once I get it. And then I'll finish my outro. Okay, I'm back. I got the last one. You will see every ending, it's just that I replaced uh, basically an ending that meant the same as another ending, so it was basically a copy and didn't do anything, so you're not missing much. But hey, here we go, a narrow escape, a little kissy, the good guys, a new adventure. So I will say, I do like the endings. Um. But, yeah, I guess anything past the actual game is the same unless you get the perfect ending. And then other than that, the only thing... Other than that, yeah, the endings are actually different. So, um, just so you know, a narrow escape is where you get the affection meter in the middle-ish. A kissy kiss is essentially you have full affection meter the good guys is where well actually it doesn't matter kissy kiss and the good guys you just have to have a high enough affection meter it doesn't need to be maxed out 
But basically the difference between the two is whether you accept or deny them. And then a new adventure is you have to get a perfect run where you max out the affection and then accept a vol. And then you get a chance with um, Subin. So yeah, honestly, I really, really love this game. It's on point. I think it's actually high up on my list of games I really like. Granted, again, the highest replayability would be to read all the lore, see all the outcomes of your choices, that kind of thing. But other than that, I don't know if I could replay the game past that point. Um, but yeah, it's a really, I say top tier game. Super solid. And I would actually recommend playing this. I will also say, whoever you decide to talk to in the 10 minute break session, I uh, will actually have their character appear when Vol changes into them. Which is interesting, because it would give hint that Subin knows who you talk to, which is interesting. But I also find it interesting that the perfect ending also hints at you talking to all your friends during that 10 minute break, when you actually only got the option of one person. So yeah, that's interesting. But anyways, um, yeah, the game was super fun. And you know what? I'm glad my boss made me play it. I don't think this is the type of game I would have played without their insistence. Um, and what I was actually surprised is when you're digging into the lore and like talking to the characters and uh, talking to the other players, um, you actually find out there's a lot more representation here than on the surface level, which I won't spoil. So if you're interested, I definitely give this a play. But I think that's enough praise for now. So thank you for tuning into The Frequency. This is The Rebel Lemon, signing off. So good night and sweet nightmares.